Today, we are working with one of my absolute favorite finds at Dollar Tree, their planters, and I actually have 25 awesome ideas to share with you. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. Now let's dive into this very first planter hack idea. So grab yourself a medium and small sized flower pot from Dollar Tree and we're gonna need some adhesive. So we're gonna use a combination of some E6000 along with some hot glue. The hot glue is gonna set up quickly for us so we can get on with our project while the E6000 dries. That is gonna make it outdoor friendly for us. So flip that smaller pot onto the bottom of the larger pot and then we can spray paint. So you wanna make sure you find a spray paint that is a paint plus primer. It's made for indoors and out and it's also made for plastic. I will link this one down in the description box below for you. I did flip this upside down first, gave it two coats, flipped it right side up and gave it one more coat so we have a nice finish. And this is what it's going to look like once it's dried. So now you can use this outdoors if you want and actually put real flowers in there. We are going to do more of a faux finish with some more Dollar Tree items, including some Spanish moss, some styrofoam and some hoop wreaths and these awesome greenery pens that are going to help us hold this all together. First up, let's work with the styrofoam. Now, Dollar Tree is literally the only place I ever buy styrofoam because it's the most affordable. So what I'm doing is just cutting this block of styrofoam down to size so it goes a little bit underneath the lip of the bigger pot so it's hidden inside there. Use a little bit of hot glue and that will attach it down into the bottom and the inside of our pot. Now this is where those wreath hoops come in handy. We're gonna use the largest size and the smallest size, and then take some floral tape and kind of wire them together at the bottom so we have one piece. Now we're gonna attach this onto the styrofoam. So take the bottom of the hoop and some hot glue, run it along the styrofoam, and then set those wreaths right into the hot glue and press down. That is going to help secure these wreaths down into that styrofoam. Here's a close up look of what that should be looking like. And then we're gonna come in with those greenery pins and we're gonna push those down into the styrofoam over the wreath, one pin on each side. And then I actually came in with my scissors to push them down all the way as the hot glue was still drying. So it kind of sat down into the hot glue and became one piece. To cover up the styrofoam, that's where we're gonna pull out our Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. Just pull out a section and cover up over the hoops and the styrofoam. So these hoops are actually going to be kind of a trellis for us and these are greenery picks that I got last year from Dollar Tree. I always save my greenery so I can use them for different projects year after year. And this year they are going on this really pretty trellis in this planter. So I'm just sticking some into the styrofoam and then spiraling it up those wreaths. I also stuck some down in there to just kind of hang over the side. But I also think this would be really, really pretty if you put real vines in there and used this with real greenery and use dirt and a plant and this would become an actual real trellis for some live plants. So this next idea will really work on a lot of different kinds of pots, but we're looking for these that have a nice flat side and they don't have a bunch of uh, raised designs on them. And we're actually going to add a decal to do that. We're going to start by measuring out the area so we can make sure our design is going to fit on there. And I do have a Cricut machine. So I applied some vinyl to a mat, created my design and design space, and then just sent the design to my Cricut machine to cut some white matte vinyl out. Now I will say if you don't have a vinyl machine, I just reopened up my Etsy shop and we'll have this decal available for you. So if you don't want to make it, or if you don't have a machine, to make one, you can head over there and purchase it to recreate this project or use this decal in your own special creative way. And I'm just adding this decal right onto the front of this flower pot to give it 
it some more personality. So cute to add to the front of a porch or walkway. But I just want to kind of give you this idea as you can also personalize this with your last name, a house number, your own little saying, make different ones for holidays and seasons. But again, if you love this design, you can find it in my Etsy shop, which you can click the link in the description box below, or I have a QR code popping up on your screen. You can scan and head over and find that over there. Next, we're gonna do a look for less. I am super obsessed with these really trendy planters, but look at the price tag. I just cannot do it. So we're gonna make one similar, get that look for a lot less. So we're gonna use a galvanized planter. This one's actually a dot from Dollar General. So head there, cause you can still find things for a dollar instead of a dollar 25. And you're also gonna need some of these half wood beads, which I'll link down below for you. You can find them on Amazon at craft stores. And we are just going to hot glue these beads onto this galvanized metal bucket just evenly spacing them out around the bottom edge first and then we're going to build off of that so come up about an inch and start adding another row and then another inch above that and just equally space them out from side to side as well as top to bottom and once you have them all glued on there you can take them outside and spray paint them i will link this spray paint down below for you too. I really like this color because it's not stark white. It still gives you um, more of a neutral tone, but it doesn't have a lot of yellow in it, which is what I like to stay away from when, I, when it comes to cream spray paints. So just a couple coats of that. This is what it's gonna look like once it's dried, brought it inside, and now for the fun, messy part. I'll also link this down below. It's a lightweight spackling. You're gonna need some gloves because as I said, it's gonna get messy. Grab yourself out some of that spackling and we are just gonna start applying it onto the edges of those beads. Basically what we're doing here is we're kind of creating a seamless look. We don't wanna see the edge of the bead at all. We want it to kind of look like it's blending into the planter. So go, go around those edges and also kind of tap your finger up and down to give you some texture, not just on the beads, but also the planter itself. So I slowed it down to give you a close-up look of what it's looking like so far. And you see we are getting a really nice texture in there and those bumps that we really love from the original planter that was a lot more expensive. So we're just gonna continue on doing this method of tapping our fingers up and down to get that texture and covering up the seams of the beads to get a seamless look. Also, don't forget to get that top edge of your planter too. And this is after about three hours of letting it sit and dry. We can come in now with a piece of sandpaper, again from Dollar Tree, and we're just very lightly going over this. We don't want a bunch of like really hard, thick, pointy peaks. We want them kind of more soft and rounded. So just don't knock down too much of that beautiful texture that we created, but you do want to knock off some of the tops of those points and give it more of a soft look. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. Obviously this is a small version, so you can do this with different size planters to get a nicer, bigger look and effect. You can do this to vases even and put flowers in them, put plants in them. Really trendy, but in an affordable way. Way. Next, we're going to make a moss bunny out of these stacking Easter eggs you can get from Dollar Tree. If you missed my Easter hacks video, then guess what? You'll get to see it here right now as these are super popular and very viral on Instagram and TikTok right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the two bottom eggs, not the top egg. We're not going to use that, but save that because you can use that for other projects. And we are going to cover up the top hole of these Easter eggs with some white duck tape it just kind of helps it blend in and we're just going to cover up that hole so that obviously we don't have a hole in the top of our easter bunny's head and then here is what it's going to look like close up now we can take this outside and start spray painting it so we are going to make these into moss easter bunnies so i'm using a grass green spray paint here gave these a couple coats that's going to help us to have these kind of blend in and you won't necessarily see the egg itself if we have some holes once we go to attach our moss and then speaking of moss, we are going to be making a mess with some moss. So grab out a shower curtain or a plastic table cover, protect your work surface. That is going to make it for an easy cleanup. We're going to make some ears out of these styrofoam cones from Dollar Tree. Just take one and you're going to take a knife and cut it right down the center. That's going to give us two halves and 
two ears for our Easter bunny. And a tip here is to grab out your dust buster, keep a vacuum handy. It's gonna help clean up our styrofoam mess and our moss mess. Next, take your scissors and we're going to round off the top point of the styrofoam and we're gonna round the bottom off too. You're gonna make these look like Easter Bunny ears. All right, so now you can see where I'm going with this. We need to hot glue these onto the top. So instead of spacing them out, I actually ended up making them touch each other in the middle and kind of make more of a seamless look versus ears that were kind of popped off to the sides. And now you need your moss. Now, unfortunately, my Dollar Tree had one bag of moss and I am pretty sure it's gonna take at least four to five bags of moss to cover up just the front side of these Easter bunnies. So I had to head to the craft store and grab some moss from there. So that's an option too. And I've also linked some down in the description box below for you because you can also get it from Amazon. And it's still pretty much the same price as the craft store. So it'll save you a trip. So we're just adding some hot glue onto the styrofoam, covering it up with the moss and then working our way from the top to the bottom. As I said, I just did the front side of my Easter bunnies. So it's going on my fireplace and you're not gonna see the back anyway. It'll save you some time, save you some money. We're gonna give this bunny a little bow for its neck. So this is Dollar Tree ribbon that I just made a real simple bow with, added some hot glue to, and then centered it and put it right on the front of the bunny. And then where does the planter come in? Well, right now. So these planters from Dollar Tree are the perfect size to be able to just set these bunnies right down on top of, and I love the little fleur-de-lis on the bottom, makes it look even more fancy. I didn't even hot glue it on because I figured, you know what, I can put this in a trash bag or something um, for off season and be able to take this back out so I can kind of take it apart when I'm not using it and pull it back out later on and it'll condense it and then I can just put it all together and it's ready to go for next Easter. Keeping with the spring and Easter theme, we're gonna grab some of these carrot picks from Dollar Tree. I grabbed the smaller pack that had three in there and along one of their with their rectangle planters. And then you're also gonna need some of this moss for it. I don't know that it's necessarily called moss. It's more of like a basket filler, but it's got that grassy green color. This is such an easy, quick project. You just kind of bunch it up, stick it down into your planter, and then we're gonna add our carrots in there and make a little carrot patch. The picks were pretty long, so you are going to cut those down and then just use the moss or the basket filler in there to help hold these up. So there's no glue needed. And again, this is another one of those items that you can take apart and kind of condense down and save for next year. It makes it for easy storage. And then you can just pull it out, pop your carrots back in, and it's ready to go for the next year. I just kind of propped a bunny up in the front of this planter, but I think this would be super cute if you have a vinyl machine to put a decal on the front of your planter that says carrot patch or something like that. That would be cute and seasonal. So our first project was kind of the easy way to do this. Now we're gonna make sort of like an urn style planter with a bigger Dollar Tree planter, a smaller one, and then we're going to need some pieces of five inch square plaque and a six and a half inch square plaque that you can find at the craft store, along with a four inch and five inch circle plaque. I'll link them down below for you. And then we're gonna need some adhesive. So depending on what you have, I would definitely use some kind of construction adhesive so that you can use this outside. The E6000 works too. So let's put these together. We're gonna take our large square and our small square, add some adhesive in between and plop those on top of each other to give us that tiered look. We're gonna do the same thing with the circles, just using that adhesive in the center to make sure that they stay together. And now here's where our planters come into play. We're gonna add some of that adhesive onto the rim of our smaller planter and turn that upside down and put that on top of our square plaques. Mm -hmm. 
Now add some more adhesive onto the bottom of our planter and we're gonna stack the circle plaques on top of that, but we want the smaller one on the bottom and the larger circle on the top. And then the last step in building this is just to add some adhesive onto that top wood circle and put your planter on the top and you can see our urn starting to come together now you do want to let this sit and dry so i did add some rocks in the inside there that'll help kind of compress it all down together while it dries so anything heavy works for this i just happen to have some dollar tree river rocks on hand and once that is completely dry you can take this outside and spray paint it i'm using an oil rubbed bronze bronze for this and another this is another um, spray paint that is going to work not just on the plastic but also the wood it is for indoors and outdoors and has the paint plus primer so you can see here once you add your plant to the inside or some greenery to the inside it all comes together nicely and looks like one cohesive piece pretty cute for a dollar tree diy now let's turn a simple planter into a beautiful lantern. This one here I liked because it has a real thin plastic around it. So it's going to make it easy for us to burn some holes into it. So we're actually going to use a hot glue gun to do this. You could use a wood burning tool. If you have one of those, that would work too. You just slowly kind of push the heated tip of your hot glue gun down into the plastic. And as you can see, it is going to create a hole for us. And if you want to make the hole a little bit bigger, you can grab out some pliers and kind of pick out any of the excess plastic that might have melted and covered up the hole. But you're just going to work your way around the planter, randomly burning holes into this planter. I will say open up a window, might want to wear a mask as it is going to release some gases from that plastic. And now we are going to add some of those Dollar Tree River Rocks to the bottom there and a candle. If you're gonna put this outside, definitely use an outdoor friendly candle. One that has a little remote control definitely helps too, or has a timer on it. So it turns off and on for you. But this is what it looks like during the daytime. And I also wanted to show you what it looks like in the evening. Now we're gonna make a raised tray. Dollar Tree is so awesome. They always carry these galvanized metal buckets with the jute on them. And you're also gonna need some of these burner covers from the kitchen section. Now I had already used this one for a different project. So it was already the plaster color in the chalk paint I'm gonna be using. So we're just going with that color. I taped off the jute cause I wanna save that detail. And then coming in with that plaster colored chalk paint that I get from Walmart and I'll link it down below for you. We're just gonna make this all kind of look like the same so it comes together. Together. Once the paint has dried, remove your painter's tape and then we're going to add some more uh, jute or rope around the edge of our burner cover. Again, just trying to make this all look nice and like it looks like one piece versus two pieces coming together. So then we are going to glue these together. You can use your E6000, you can use hot glue, you can use construction adhesive, whatever you have on hand, just add some onto the bottom of the planter and put your tray right on top. This is super cute to add your seasonal decor on. If you want to make it food safe, you actually can just put a regular dinner plate on top and use it to serve your treats. Let's make a very easy side table on a budget using two of these planters from Dollar Tree and yep, a pizza pan. So first things first, we need to glue these planters together. So we're gonna flip one upside down, add our adhesive onto the bottom and then just stick the other planter right on top.
for this one, I'm actually just gonna be using some flat white primer instead of a regular spray paint for this because I wanted that flat white look. You could also use some white chalk paint for this. That'll still give you that matte finish. It's just gonna take you a little bit to paint it all on there with a paintbrush, or you can also find that in a spray paint too. So while that's drying, we're gonna come inside, use some rub and buff and a clean cloth, lint-free cloth, and kind of buff this rub and buff into the pizza pan, which is gonna give it a pretty metallic finish. Another Dollar Tree item we're gonna use is this nautical rope for some decorative purposes, but since all of this is dry, let's put it together. We're gonna take some adhesive, add it to the top of the planter, and then glue that pizza pan right on top, and then come in with some hot glue and attach the nautical rope to the center where those planters meet. I also added some to the top of the planter and to the bottom. And here's what it looks like when it's finished. It's a little bit small, so I think if you use some bigger planters, you would get more of a tall look. Or you could add another planter to the bottom and kind of build it up to make it taller. But definitely still a cute little accent and side table that was super affordable and only about $5. Want to turn a regular planter into a hanging planter? You can do that super easy. So grab your planter out and also your hot glue gun. Just like our lantern earlier, we're going to burn some holes into the sides of this planter at the top. You're going to evenly space them apart, two on one side and two on the other. Now we need to hang it. So I'm using this four ply jute, which I'll link down below. You can find it at Walmart for like five bucks and it lasts forever. It's really thick jute and cording, so it works perfect for things like this. We're gonna cut off a length of that jute and we are going to feed one tail through one of the holes and the other tail from the outside to the inside of the other hole. And then you're gonna pull the tail so they are equal and even on the inside and then pull it so it is tight on the outside. You're gonna repeat that process for the other side and then once we have all the tails pulled through you can grab them all together tie a knot at the top and now we have a hanging planter So we made the carrot patch with these rectangle planters earlier, but now we're gonna make another beautiful planter using this rectangle one. And also you're going to need either some heavy duty scissors, some tin snips, or in this case, I'm gonna use a wood burning tool. And a little tip here is you can use a coffee cup as a holder so it doesn't fly off your work table, which always worries me. So this is a little nice hack crafting in progress. I think that's pretty much how everything goes here. And we are actually going to just trim off the edge of this planter. So we're just left with the inside planter. So I just got out a piece of scrap wood and I put the razor blade attachment onto the wood burning tool. And we're basically just going to heat cut off this top rim. We're 
we're gonna make a wood box to go around this planter. So you're gonna need two of the longer wood sh wall shelves from Dollar Tree along with one pack of the smaller ones because it comes with two pieces in that one. And they come with holes drilled in them for the rope that comes with the set. But we actually want this to look like one piece. So we're gonna grab some spackling from Dollar Tree and add that into all of the holes, let it dry and then sand it all down smooth. And now you can decorate your wood pieces however you want. I wanted mine to have more of a dark wood stain on them. So I'm using just an acrylic paint to do that. You could use wood stain or you could paint them or even leave them as is if that is your style. Now we're gonna use some wood glue, which you can also find from Dollar Tree. I'm adding two rows of that onto the smaller end of this um, box, basically just making a triangle. A little tip here is to also use some painter's tape to help hold this all together and brace it so that wood glue has time to dry. I also love this thing. It is a battery powered staple gun and brad nailer. So I actually just put some thicker uh, staples in this and it's a little bit more heavy duty, but it's not like considered really a power tool. And I just put those on the corners to really help reinforce this so it would stay together and then filled in the holes with some more paint to cover them up. On the inside of this planter, we are going to add some of this styrofoam and some moss to the inside of there. And I also put some hot glue onto the edges of the planter to help cover that up. I also want to mention I will put that staple gun and mini brad nailer down in the description box below for you. A nice thing to keep in your craft stash if you're working with wood and don't necessarily want to have a big power tool or have to go to your workshop. So then I just put the planter on the inside of the wood box. And then these are a previous Dollar Tree DIY that I did. And I can link that video down below for you if you want to see how to make them using almost all Dollar Tree supplies made these really classy and fancy looking at tulips that I just stuck down into the moss and the styrofoam. So I will have a video coming up where I show a ton of hacks using terracotta pots. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet as that video is soon to come. But we're gonna take a big terracotta pot here and we're gonna stuff it with some paper and add some Dollar Tree River Rocks to the inside there and then put down a terracotta pot bottom and then put a Dollar Tree vase on the top of that, add some more River Rocks into the vase and you can use this as a really pretty candle holder. What in the world do plungers have to do with the next project? Well, we're gonna use the handles to make a pretty stand for these planters. So the first thing I did was take off the stickers and then use some Mod Podge to get all the residue off of them. And then we're gonna use a handsaw and miter box to cut them down. I will definitely leave this down below for you, but you can find them at Walmart for like 10 bucks. Super awesome thing to also have in your craft stash. I just cut the threading off of two of the plunger handles, mark the center, and then cut cut those in half so we have four equal sized pieces of basically just now round dowel rod. And then you're gonna need a planter that is pretty much just uh, smooth down the side and is straight, not necessarily curved or rounded, which Dollar Tree luckily has. And to attach this onto our planter, we're gonna use some super glue. We're also gonna be using some hot glue here so that it tacks on and stays on for us while that super glue dries. So I am adding these legs around the planter evenly, just placing it on there and then using some uh, masking tape to hold the legs on until all that glue is set up.
Next to the moss bunny, this is probably my favorite planter hack ever because it turned out so nice. So these medium sized planters from Dollar Tree, you're gonna need two of them and then we're gonna need to cut off the top of one of them using some tin snips. I'll link these down below for you. Another Walmart find for only $5. It cuts through this plastic really nicely. We just went all the way around the top and we're gonna use the top not the bottom of this. We just need to make sure we had a big enough hole for us to be able to use this as a planter. Then we're gonna take our hot glue, go around the edge of the bottom planter and put the cut planter on top of that. Now let's reinforce this. Use some duct tape and just go around the outside edges. That's gonna ensure that these are not gonna come apart. Now we're going to be covering up this entire thing with nautical rope from Dollar Tree so you don't necessarily have to worry about the tape because you're not going to see it. We are going to go crazy with the hot glue and the rope and we are going to wind this around the entire thing just covering up the entire planter all the way to the top. All right, so here's what it looks like after that first length of rope has been added onto this. I want you to take a second, pause right now, go down to the comment section below and tell me how many lengths of rope do you think it's gonna take to cover this entire planter? I will have the answer to that here for you in just a second, but I think it'd be a fun game. Pause, let me know down in the comments below how many things of rope from Dollar Tree do you think this will take to cover? So yep, this took seven lengths of Dollar Tree rope to cover. If you guessed seven, congratulations. Big thumbs up to you. It does take a little bit to wrap it all, but it is so worth it. Look how pretty it looks in the end. Very trendy, and it only costs less than $12 to make, which is a great deal and bargain, as a lot of planters these days are so much more than that. Next up is another fun way to hang these planters using some bamboo rings from Dollar Tree. They come in a set of two, so a bigger one and a smaller one. You're gonna need two sets or head to Amazon, grab some embroidery hoops. You'll need two eight inch size and one six inch size because we're only gonna need the two larger ones and a smaller one. So we're gonna take the large one, put the smaller one on the inside and take some jute, tie a knot, and then kind of wrap it around with a larger hoop sticking out from the side, kind of in an L shape. Once you get back to the beginning and have wrapped it a few times, tie the tails up and cut off the excess. Thank you. 
Now we're going to repeat this on the other side with the other larger size hoop, just taking some jute, wrapping it around the sides and then tying it off. And we want those bigger hoops to kind of make a triangle shape and touch at the top. We're going to add some more jute there. So this all becomes one big piece. So here's what it looks like when those two bottom ones are attached. Now, like I said, we need to attach the top. So again, wrapping the jute around the two larger hoops, tying a knot and cutting off the excess. To hang this up, we're going to use that four ply jute that I mentioned earlier that I'll have linked down below for you. We're going to tie it around those top two larger hoops, make a couple tails and then tie those tails together to make a knot at the top and a nice little hoop and loop for us to hang. And now you can add your planter down into the smaller hoop at the bottom. This is one of the smaller ones from Dollar Tree. Just make sure it has a nice lip around the edge so it grabs on and then you can put your plant in there. So I am sharing the a fake plant, an Ikea plant that I had that fit down inside there nice. Looks really pretty. But of course you can pop the holes out of the bottom of your planter and put some soil and some live plants in there and hang these indoors or out. It's always fun when I can get down into the workshop and do some woodworking projects. We're going to make a holder for these four plastic planters from Dollar Tree. We're going to evenly space them out on a one by six piece of scrap wood that I had. And then we're going to cut down the sides so we have some feet. So we're going to take this one by six, mark it to six inches and chop it down with a miter saw. And I also have a cut list popping up on your screen so you can see all the pieces that you're going to need. This is definitely beginner friendly as you're only going to need those two six inch pieces cut and then a 21 inch longer piece. Now we need to evenly space out those planters. So I did the math and found out you need to mark your longer piece of wood at three inches, eight inches, 13 and 18 inches. And then we're going to find the center of that board and mark those measurements. Then we're going to come in with a hole saw here on our drill. You just want to make sure that the hole saw is going to be big enough for your little planters to fit down into. And to do this, you just put the center of your drill bit on the marks and then drill down. This part does take some muscle and I definitely think it would have helped if I had some big heavy duty clamps to help hold this down. But you know what? If you don't have it, you don't have it and you make it work if you don't. And that's what I did here. So I just drilled down halfway on one side, flipped it over, put the drill bit, bit into the hole and then drilled through the rest of the way and that cut through the rest of the wood. And as you can see, now we have a nice hole in the wood that we need to repeat four times for our four planters. Then we need to sand all of our pieces. So I'm using some 80 grit sandpaper in my orbital sander, but you can use regular sandpaper and hand sand it or a sanding block works too. And then I did actually have to hand sand down the inside of the holes anyway. So not a big deal. Just making sure to get all of the rough edges and any splintering off of there. And now we can put this together. So I'm going to be using my brad nailer for this to attach the two sides onto, but you can use wood glue for 
this. You could use a hammer and nails for this, but you do want to measure down about two and a quarter inches from the top and make a straight line that is going to give us a guide of where we need to add either glue or nails to. So we're going to stand this up on its side and I'm going to be using my brad nailer here just to hammer to nail the side into the main centerpiece. And here is a close up look of that. Probably added more nails than I actually needed to, but you know what? Now it's good and secure. Took it over and sanded off the markings that I had made on there and smooth out those nail holes. And now we have a planter. So basically just three pieces of wood nailed together with some holes in it. Pretty simple. You can leave it as is, but I am gonna be using mine outdoors for live plants. So I wanted to come in and give it some wood stain, which is going to protect and seal the wood. So I'm using some early American, definitely make sure you wear some gloves for this, use a lint free cloth and just go over all of the surfaces of your wood. So I let this sit overnight to dry and now here is the finished piece, but wait till we add our plants to this. It just makes the whole piece complete. Looks so pretty, really, really nice, especially with those Dollar Tree planters. If you have a Dollar Tree Plus, check their planters out down that aisle. They are so affordable. Three and five dollars for really nice big planters. Really great deal there. We're going to grab this one. That was a 14 inch planter for only three dollars. And then back down in my workshop, we're going to pop open my spray paint tent. I stinking love this thing when it's cold outside, when it is raining. I just pop open the basement door and I can still spray paint. Love that. So I will definitely link the spray tent down in the description box below for you, along with having a Lazy Susan, this cheap one from Walmart that I'll link down for you it um, as well is super affordable and great to have in your spray paint tents so you can twist it around and get all the sides of whatever you're spray painting so we're going to take our dollar tree planter and some oil rubbed bronze spray paint and just give this planter a nice coat or two it's going to turn it into from one that looks like plastic into one that really looks beautiful and more like metal So here's what it looks like once it's dried and noticed I also spray painted the inside top edge to make sure we didn't see any of that orange coming through. I'm actually going to be using this in the she shed to put a big tall tree in. So I am taking another Dollar Tree planter. We're going to put it on the inside of this planter and flip it upside down so we can raise up our plant on the inside of there. So just sticking the tree on top of the smaller planter and then to cover up the inside I had some leftover burlap lap fabric that I'm going to just push and shove on the inside of here, making sure it just is all underneath the top lip of the planter. And then to finish it off, we're going to use some Spanish moss. I love this stuff from Dollar Tree at a great price. It looks really small and compact, but the trick with it is once you get it out, start pulling it apart and it's going to go a lot farther for you. So I did use two bags to cover up this um, the inside of this planter, but looks really nice. Covered up all the burlap and the planter inside there. Gave it a real classy and finished look. I 
probably going to share this every year and I already got my fountain pump out so I can do it again this spring. Grab one of these $5 bigger planters from Dollar Tree. We're going to make a very affordable fountain for outside. So of course you need a planter. You're going to need some river rocks and we're going to put this all together with the help of also some pool noodles from Dollar Tree. So grab some of those first. This one just looks really pretty. So if you already have a planter on hand, that probably would work too, but you are going to need a smaller planter to go on the inside, just like we did with the tree earlier. Flip it upside down. It's going to help take up some space in there so we don't have to use all river rocks to fill it up pool noodle. You can also sometimes find these pool noodle knives at Dollar Tree and somebody had mentioned their lettuce knives too. So if you have a let lettuce knife that works or a regular knife, whatever works, just cut up this pool noodle. I cut some bigger pieces up and then I cut some of those in half so I could fill in some gaps. It's just basically a place filler inside of this fountain. So I found this fountain on Amazon. I'll link it down below for you. And I left the planter in the center open because it has suction cups on the bottom. So you can just stick it right onto the planter and then start filling in with your river rocks all the way around it. It's going to help to hold the fountain down and also give it a really pretty look. Next, we're going to fill this with water and then the fun part, we're going to connect it so we can see this thing in action. So you actually have two different options with this fountain. You have the solar panel, which is what I use, or it also has a USB cable so you can plug it into a power source and it will stay on as long as it has water in it, it will do the fountain effect. It also has different caps on the end of it. So you can switch those out and get different fountain effects too. I'll make sure to link this fountain down in the description box below for you. Super affordable and a fun way to make your own outdoor water feature. The uh, solar panel, I also want to show you, depending on how much sun is actually hitting the fountain, is going to vary the height of how high the, the water goes. So keep that in mind too, but I think it's really fun. And in the mornings, we get a lot of morning sun in the front of our house. So this thing is going like crazy in the morning and kind of tones down a little bit more in the evening time. There's different ways to attach your solar panel. It's got some feet on the back that pop out so you can prop it up. You could hang it up. You could use some double sided tape and attach it to your siding or uh, we just leave ours down into our decorative rock in our landscaping. Dollar Tree came out with these stacking planters a few years ago, but this last year they had three different sizes, which I thought was really cool. So depending on the size of garden or plants you want to use, you can adjust those. But I have a couple ideas that you can use these for that aren't necessarily for plants. So we're going to take some of those river rocks. We're going to put them in between each one of these planters to kind of help add some weight and tone and um, hold it down. So for $1.25, you get three of these in a set. And once you stack them, this is what it's going to look like. I decided to go ahead and also add some hot glue to where these all connect in the middle. And then we're going to use this for not plants. We're actually going to use this for organization. So what we're going to do is add another little flower pot to the center here. It just seemed to be the perfect size to add even more organization in the center and it sat in there perfectly for us. So we're going to use this for some crafting supplies. So things like your paintbrushes, your markers, pens and pencils, or this would be great in an office for your office supplies. Put some um, scissors in the top in the middle. You could also put this on a Lazy Susan and make it rotate so it's a little bit easier to get to different things, but a nice compact way to store a lot of things in a small space.
So I think a lot of us probably think of these sitting on the ground, but it's really easy to actually make these into a vertical garden. Just take a piece of scrap wood and your drill, drill a small hole right down in the center of each one of these planters. And then you can just drill and screw these onto your wall to make an outdoor wall garden. So if you wanna use these indoors for fake plants, you just wanna insert some styrofoam from Dollar Tree, just cut up so that they feed right and sit right down into the little holes of these planters. And then you can add your greenery into them, just some vines and also some succulents that are also from Dollar Tree. But if you wanted to use these for live flowers, you could also put some compacted dirt in there and put your succulents in there, your air plants in there or different plants that would do well with not a ton of dirt as it really needs to be compact in there so it doesn't fall out. But a really fun, easy idea. And I think these little plant walls are getting really popular lately. So here is the plant wall that I kind of have going with some faux plants. Another idea here is just use some of your Spanish moss to fill in the gaps. For this one, you're gonna need some large planters. So earlier in this video, I showed you how to make a side table. We're gonna do that with more heavy duty materials and make a larger planter. So the bigger ones from the Dollar Tree's Plus section will work better for this one. So I'm actually gonna make an outdoor side table for our porch for this with these larger planters, a big wood round, and you're also gonna need some construction adhesive. So just like the one earlier, we're gonna flip the one upside down for the bottom, add some construction adhesive and place the other planter right side up on top of that. Again, we're using that same construction adhesive and running it around the top edge of the top planter. And then we are going to add our wood round. And I know it's totally sad. And when I originally posted this, you all were so sad that I used our wedding sign for this. But honestly, I didn't know what else to use that sign for. We weren't putting it in the house or anything and it said welcome or something. So it was like, yeah, I had the date on it and everything. Probably not something we would keep, but I definitely wanted to reuse it and the backside was blank. So kind of still a memory used on our front porch and in a more useful way. So I just sat that wood sign on the front there and or on the top there, pressed it down until it was nice and secured. And then we're gonna decorate it up with some of this nautical rope from Dollar Tree covering up the center. Cause as you can see, it wasn't really a nice connection there. So a really easy way to hide that is with this rope. I just tied it around a couple times and then tied a knot in the back. So I really love the way this one turned out. It is taller and bigger and a little bit more useful, especially on our front porch where we have two tables and love to sit out there, watch the cars go by and drink our coffee. So this one is definitely a hack and I think could come in really handy for anybody that is hosting parties or needs a little extra space to put things outdoors. So you're gonna grab a really inexpensive tomato cage and we're gonna bend the feet back and it's actually upside down if you can tell it here. So the little feet, we're gonna put the planter in between those and then bend the feet over the planter and that's gonna hold our planter in place.
Yep, it's just as easy as that. We now have a raised planter that you could put plants in or another idea is to use it for more useful things for parties, such as adding ice to it and putting your drinks in there. You could put it poolside and put things like sunscreen in it. You could put bug spray in it, towels in it. Like I said, anywhere where you need a little extra more raised space to hold things for outdoors. Another way to use these planters outdoor is to make a plant hanger using planters and broomsticks from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna grab out our quick set concrete. So I'll link this down below for you. You just add water to it. I will mention to use gloves and a mask. I did not use a mask and you can yell at me because that was just a dumb thing to not do um, because you definitely can get very sick off concrete dust. So don't do what I did here. Even if it's a nice day and the wind is blowing, you definitely don't want that wind blowing the concrete mix into your lungs. So basically, all that all aside, we are going to put the concrete mix right down into our Dollar Tree planter and add our water to the planter and mix it up all into that one space. So here's what the concrete is going to look like once it's all mixed up and now we can take our broom handle and sit it down into the concrete. As you saw before, I did take off the plastic end that had the little hole in it. We don't need that. We're going to center this right upright into the planter and it helps to have some painters tape to help hold that up while the concrete sets. So you'll have to read the directions on your concrete to see how long it takes to set up, but I just went ahead and waited until the next day with mine to make sure it was completely hardened and cured before removing that painter's tape. And as you can see, we are good to go now. Now in comes another Dollar Tree item, these shelf hooks, and y'all are gonna make fun of me because you do every time I post this project. I <laughs> actually installed this upside down. Not a smart thing to do as my plants just fell right off of this when the wind blew. So don't do what I did, but it's still the same installation process. I held that up onto the broom handle and drilled holes where the little attachments are through the handle and then actually added a dowel rod into the center of the pole. So if there was wind or it fell over or something, it wasn't going to bend the handle and then it would be out of whack forever. So just grab a thicker dowel rod that'll fit down into the inside of these broom handles, which are hollow. And that's also gonna give us something for our uh, shelf hook thing to grab onto. So I'm taking that dowel rod, holding it up to the top, and I'm gonna need extra pairs of hands here. So if you have extra hands, that is helpful, but I was able to figure this out doing it by myself, installing um, some screws, through the bracket, into the broom handle, into the dowel rod, obviously upside down, so don't do that. Um, and then we have a plant hook. So I did two of these, and as you can see, you just hang your plants on there, ideally the other way around, so it doesn't blow off, but you get the idea. And you can also use these as shelf hooks, which I've done in the past too. Pretty neat item the Dollar Tree carries.
Back to another concrete project, same quick crete we're going to be using here that we did for the last one, but we're going to use these planters as more of a form versus a vessel. So we're going to grab out some Pam that is going to lubricate the inside of our planter. That way when our concrete is set up, it will slide right out of there for us. I'm using another planter as a mixing bowl, so adding the concrete into it adding some water to it, mixing it up. And once it was good and mixed, I'm going to then pour that into the other planter that had the Pam in it. And now you're gonna laugh because we're gonna bring up back those plungers from Dollar Tree. But again, we're going to be using the wood handles from those. So we're going to need three of those total. Again, yes, just proving that these are plunger hand plungers from Dollar Tree. You're going to need three of those, just like I'm adding to my cart here. Once we get our concrete into the planter, you want it to stay wet. And then we're going to add our little plunger handles down into the concrete. One thing I would uh, wished I would have done here is this is a pretty wide planter and I wish my feet of this stand would have been closer together. So I probably would have taken something to kind of pull the legs together. Here you can see I'm actually taping them back to the planter, which makes them more wide. So it's up to you. It just depends on the look that you're going for. But I think if I redid this, I would want my plunger handles to be more closer together. And as we go through this process, you'll see what I'm talking about. So once this set up again, the next day came back, removed the painter's tape. And then as you'll see, you just kind of break the concrete away from the edges of the planter and it will slide right out for you. All right, so here it is once we popped it out of the mold. And as you can see, this is why I'm saying I wish those feet were more together. They kind of stick out a little bit too far for me on the sides. And if they were more together, they it would have made it taller too. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna redo this project, we are gonna come in with a sanding block also from Dollar Tree. Go around those edges and make sure to knock off any of the sharp edges and then you can paint it if you want to i'm using some chalk paint here but you can also leave it as is if you like the natural look Nonetheless, I think this turned out really cute. It gave me a little space to put a plant on top and also plants underneath and a little lantern off to the side. So made a cute little vignette on our porch. And then probably saving the quickest and easiest DIY for last, we're gonna take this planter from Dollar Tree and some oil rubbed bronze spray paint and just give it a quick coat. Actually, probably two or three coats to make sure you get all that orange color um, covered up, let it dry, and then you can use it in your home, obviously as a planter, or in my case, I actually used mine on my fireplace as a little storage place for blankets. If you are so ready for some outdoor decor and DIYs, I'll have a video popping up on your screen. Go ahead, click that. Some great affordable budget friendly ideas over there that you don't want to miss. Thanks so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one. Have a very creative day.